Gerardo, we've been speaking for many years about the problems Italy has had, but at the moment it appears to be in a sweet spot. The Draghi government is doing really well by all counts as well, uh, and growth in Italy this year hopefully will be circa 6% as well. The PNRR uh, is beginning to roll out as well. So my question for you is, rather than what's going wrong for a change, what could go wrong? Because, of course, Italy, uh, for once, uh, is leading the pack in getting this, this recovery plan out. The government appears stable as well. But is there a storm cloud on the horizon that we're missing? Steve, you're right. Uh, Italy today is on the right track. And if you look, for example, I mean, certainly if you look at GDP growth, but also if you look at exports, you have the evidence of such a good uh, uh, track. Uh, I believe that uh, Italy might benefit a lot uh, in the next future also from the redesign of the globalization that is underway. Um, in terms uh, of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, doubts and risks, obviously uh, there is always uh, uh, the risk of uh, political uh, instability. But uh, one thing that makes the situation quite strong today is the fact that uh, the Draghi's leadership uh, is not challenged by, uh, by anybody. And yet, as you say, uh, political instability on the horizon. It, could it come from actually the fact that uh, the prime minister potentially will move up to become president and, and leave a gap at that executive level? Or actually, is it going to come from outside the government, of course, because we know that the far right is, is amassing. And actually, if you add up all uh, the right wing parties, they, they've got a, a sizable share of the vote. I, obviously, I do not know what uh, Mario will decide at the end. Uh, I personally hope that uh, he will remain prime minister uh, in both positions. In any case, prime minister or president of the republic, he will uh, be and will remain a formidable asset for our country and and, and, and for Europe. Certainly, if uh, he decides or if he is elected uh, at the higher in the higher position. Uh, we might have some negative repercussions, especially in terms of determination to introduce necessary reforms, and also in terms of the execution of all the programs and projects that, that have already been decided. Uh, Corrado, before we let you go, if I can just swing back to uh, the business at hand, and there's some numbers that jump out that are, are quite fascinating, including the CET1 ratio at 20.1%, which seems quite high. What's a normal level of capital reserve for the business in future? If I have to mention and um, make a, a figure, I would say 15. Uh, we have now 20 because we have been good at accumulating uh, reserves uh, and we now have the uh, strength uh, to exploit uh, the huge opportunities that uh, are around the corner because all the markets we serve uh, are proving to be much bigger than expected. Uh, in terms of uh, wave and the new wave of non-performing assets uh, that will probably come to the market in uh, uh, in the next year and the following one uh, will be useful to have uh, strong shoulders to uh, um, take advantage of such a situation. So yes, 20 is certainly too much, but is the evidence of the strength of our balance sheet, uh, but is also the, the, the lever uh, to take advantage of what we are doing and uh, to, 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 to the opportunities coming from the three markets.